Now, this might sound profoundly important, and it is. However, Yasuni is just one part of an enormous region which is incredibly biodiverse and with many indigenous peoples that have been voluntarily isolated. What we're talking about is about one trillion dollars worth of oil in the Western Amazon. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's huge. It's like 1,000, thousand million or a thousand billion. Meal, 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 meal. Yeah. And, and that's how much, uh, because we all use oil and the oil pollutes the atmosphere. So what do we do about this problem? And it's a big problem because the president of Ecuador, on the one hand, wants money for Ecuador, and money comes from oil. And on the other hand, the indigenous people and the needs of the earth to be sustainable, there should be nobody going in there to drill oil. And this is probably the biggest political issue in Ecuador and in Peru, and uh, to a degree in Bolivia, and this entire region. It's the biggest political issue. Uh, many past presidents of Ecuador were no longer president because there is pressure in both directions. Like in the United States, they want the money, they want the oil, and they want to take the resources from Ecuador. And most of the people of Ecuador don't want that. And so Ecuador did one more thing that was very brave and new. And that was to um, write up a new constitution. You're probably aware there was a constituent assembly in Ecuador about two years ago, or one year ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. And the new constitution says that nature has equal rights. And also the constitution says that this is a plurinational country where the indigenous peoples, the indigenous nations, have equal rights to the, people of, the other people of Ecuador and the government of Ecuador. However, this violates the rights of nature and sustainability for the oil companies to go in and take the whole Oriente and drill for oil. So what do we do? We have, a, we have a problem, don't we? The problem is that the government of Ecuador and the people of Ecuador want the money from the oil, but they don't want the environmental pollution from drilling the oil. The same thing is true about mining, mining gold, copper, and other uh, materials. There's talk about issuing hundreds of new mining permits in Podocarpus National Park. But it's a national park. Nature should be left alone. And yet, they're going in to do the mining. One way to solve the problem, in my opinion, is to move into radical, important, new technologies. For example, you can get energy from the vacuum of space. And people have come up with inventions that could solve the energy problem. We won't need oil anymore. The whole energy crisis and solution can be created if we can stand up as a world community against polluting uses of energy such as oil. And maybe this is where you can be involved to help support the overall effort to come up with sustainable solutions to the situation which is very serious worldwide. So uh, uh, the first week of February at Montesueños, we will have a group coming here that understand these solutions. A and we are going to prepare a presentation to the government of Ecuador. And that presentation we will give in early February. And we will be advising the government that maybe, just maybe, you won't have to go in to get the oil. That maybe 
Ecuador can be a more independent country from pressures elsewhere in the world. Yes, Indigenous people in the rainforest can be left alone. The oil can stay in the ground. Because worldwide, there's more and more of an awareness about the importance of sustainability. And some of us think that maybe Ecuador could be the leader. So the work you're doing right now in learning English and learning about sustainability could be very important for your future. Now, let's say you're 20 years old now. I'm 70. That means you'll be my age in the year 2060. What kind of world are we going to have in 2060? Well, if we keep doing what we're doing now, the world we're going to have in 2060 will not be a world we would like. However, if we're brave enough to create a constitution like Ecuador's, or an effort to keep the oil in the ground in Yasuni, maybe we'll have a chance worldwide to turn all of this around and have a truly sustainable future. So I think you begin to understand how important these questions really are and how important that our energy future, especially energy, but also mining and logging and water treatment, all of these questions are terribly important for our future. So if I have any suggestion for you, uh, that is to be brave, to be bold, to take the spirit of some of these proposals or initiatives to create a sustainable future in Ecuador and to even move it further. The idea that many of us are discussing that we'll be presenting to the government here in Quito to acknowledge my wife Meredith as well as uh, what I'm sharing here in our place Motosuenos, which is going to be used for ecological retreats. And we hope to see you there sometime. It's in Vilcabamba. We hope that you can become a transformational person coming up with strong solutions to our problems of sustainability because we have to get beyond what's going on now. We have to get beyond solar and wind energy. We have to get to the new energy, the free energy, which will cause us to have a brave, wonderful new future for all of us. Thank you. The National University of Loja. We don't have any money for you because we're very poor. But we have a certificate and we thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. And thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you too and, uh, and just say that, that it's my honor and privilege to come here and, and share with you and to become more integrated in the community. Because after all, we moved here. We moved to your country. And we just feel, s we, we, we have a very warm and good feeling about the people of Ecuador. And I think that Ecuador could become one of the bright spots on the planet in the future. Thank you.